today we will talk on black cotton soils and the precautions or measures we should take while building the houses on black cotton soils we know the properties of black cotton soil uh, i am not talking about uh, the technical properties like c5 liquid limit plastic limit plasticity index because that is available in the books i'll just talk in general this is uh, this soil is having cohesion this soil is also having swelling properties and expansion uh, swelling or expansion properties particularly when moisture content or water content is there in this type of soil then on shrinking during dry conditions this shrinks a lot this has high plasticity index value and this is very hard during dry conditions but slippery and slushy during wet conditions this has high shear strength when dry and very low when saturated or under wet conditions black cotton soil expands under saturated conditions hence exerts upheaval pressure and can uplift floors plinth protection and similar structures in fact sometimes uh, uh, black cotton soil is compared with leaches as you know that when leech uh, uh, drinks or uh, sucks the blood then it swells similarly black cotton swell when uh, 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 sucks the water or it is with water or moisture then it also swells this uplift is so large that many a time floors can be seen lifting lifting up when black cotton swell gets dried it shrinks shrinking is such that it is visible on floors through depressions and you will find that this same property is in the foundation also therefore due to uplift and shrink case cracks are formed in on floors on walls due to settlement unequal settlement and so on so black cotton soil poses a lot of problems and you will find diagonal and vertical cracks in smaller directions of slab in the buildings vertical cracks in internal and external walls horizontal cracks in slab as cantilever action created in slab detachment of slab in outer walls towards outside bending action in outer walls towards outside detachment of plinth protections heave and settlement in floors and you see these three photographs and you see the cracks cracks are so wide that uh, it becomes uh, unsafe to use these buildings and on the right side you can see the floor which has shown the cracks main reason of cracks or uh, problems in black cotton soil is Uh, water getting mixed with the, this soil and you will uh, see that water when get mixed with black cotton soil it creates problems hence uh, to avoid cracks or problems in the soil where black cotton soil is there in in the buildings water should be kept as away as possible from the black cotton soil else black cotton soil is to be replaced or changed fully or partially in case soil is partially replaced its properties are required to be changed by mixing with non cohesive or non shrink case and non expensive soil it means which does not have such properties it means that any soil which is Uh, and which does not have the properties of black cotton soil so that should be mixed 
then uh, when we replace black cotton soil in buildings if black cotton soil is uh, up to shallow depth it is it should be replaced it is uh, quite economic in case it is not feasible to replace uh, then structural members should not rest on black cotton soil that is uh, very important and uh, to avoid this we should create a layer of sand uh between black cotton soil and the structural members like floors ground floor beams plinth protection etc it means uh, these uh, the, 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 uh, the concreting should not be placed on soil directly but on sand and below sand this type of soil may be there and then second uh, precaution which can be taken is that we should cut the water path and we should try to lengthen or cut the water path below foundation during rains particularly or otherwise so that water does not enter into the active zone uh, you see uh, from the figure here suppose building is uh, there in the center and then both sides uh, impervious layer is created say through concreting or whatever it is and that is connected with drain without any gap or joint then this uh, length suppose is l then if uh, water uh, is uh, percolating into the ground after the drain after the length of l plus drain and then it will Uh, infiltrate into the ground and if when it goes below foundation and it is does not affect the active zone of the soil then it will not affect the building so that is the idea and uh, we know that uh, mm, the the pressure bulb in the foundation is 1. Point f- approximate 1.5 times of width of the foundation so if uh, black cotton soil is there up to 1.5 times of the width of the foundation and if uh, the length of the water path is below that then it will not affect the building so that is one way second is suppose the active uh, zone of the foundation uh, of the black cotton soil itself is less then also that much uh, uh, length of uh l can be adjusted so that uh, this uh, water path is lengthened or cut off then uh, possible routes of water entering into the foundation of a building may be water from drain water pipes water from open courtyards water from broken drains constructed near foundation of the buildings or water from broken road side drains or water through joints between plinth protection and the walls which is very common water coming into the contact from outside unpaved areas and from the road or plants trees etc near foundation and then uh, uh, let us talk about plinth protection first generally plinth protection is provided horizon plinth protection of uh, cc Uh, which is uh, about ninety uh, centimeter or so, or uh, but uh, this uh, plinth protection because this is resting on black cotton soil. One, second, it uh, get detached from the wall, so there is a joint and there is a gap between wall surface and plinth protection, and water seeps into that. And once water seeps into the joint. then it damages not only the plinth protection but also the foundation of the building therefore uh, it is important that uh, what uh, this uh, plinth protection must not be damaged by the water or rain or by any other means to protect the building and foundation so uh, we should provide rcc plinth protection in the areas of black cotton soil and this uh, should be i think minimum 3 meter or or, or suppose it be uh, before that before 3 meters and road work is coming road is coming or some uh, pervious uh, impervious uh, surface is coming then it can connect it to that and then uh, the vertical plinth uh, may be provided 
uh, that may be stone cladding on the wall surface covering the joint between plinth production and the wall so water does not get through into the junction or uh, plinth beam can be overlapped over the joint so idea is that uh, water should not seep through or infiltrate through the joint uh, between the wall and the plinth production this is uh, this can be seen in the figure suppose road surface is there and rcc plinth is there and then there is a small space then uh, this drain can be provided which should be interconnected to rcc plant the plinth and this uh, drain should also be of rcc and then over the plinth uh, horizontal plinth a vertical plinth can be provided so that is the idea is that water should not uh, get through the foundation in any case then uh, there next is rain water pipes water should not be left on floor or plinth protection but connected to drain and taken away sufficiently away from the building then let us talk about the courtyards courtyards should be paved with rcc because uh, if rcc is not there then these uh, courtyards or paving will be damaged and once it is damaged uh, and the black cotton swell is there water will seep through and water will uh, and then the black cotton swell will damage the uh, the paving and the water will go in the foundation of the building and will damage the foundation of the building and uh, floors and then maybe an equal settlement will be there so uh, now, water should be taken out from the courtyard to outside drain from pipes having no disconnection and this uh, paving should be with RCC, no kacha uh, paving of the courtyards. And then no trees or grass should be planted in courtyard, otherwise water will always be there and this will always damage uh, the structure. Therefore, um, if suppose uh, area is to be grass, then it should be on, uh, on RCC flooring then uh, base concrete is generally provided in cement concrete like uh, earlier we were telling that uh, 1510 or 148 or m10 this uh, base concrete should be in lime in place of cement and then below base concrete a layer of sand should invariably be provided in case it is not feasible cns layer or msm layer may be provided in large areas particularly like roads uh, in buildings or water pipelines or like that small structures uh, my I think uh, my recommendation is that uh, sand filling should be done so sand uh, may be provided uh, idea to pro idea of providing sand is that we should have a cutoff uh, uh, layer between the RCC or CC and black cotton soil and uh, this may be of sandy layer. Then uh, let us talk about the plantation. Uh, no plants should be there uh, near foundation. Uh, generally uh, we love to provide plants near uh, the building but in black cotton soil it should be as away as possible and if somebody is loving to have the plants near the building then uh, these plants can be done over the bins, uh, RCC bins or uh, uh, where the bins can be placed near uh, the building and plants can be planted in that one. Uh, no plantation in internal courtyard again same thing can be adopted uh, these plants may be in the bins and uh, if grass is uh, required to be planted in the courtyards or inner, inner areas then it should be done on, on RCC floors. We can have RCC floor over RCC floor, uh, good earth can be placed and over that uh, grassing can be done. Uh, thanks for attending this. Uh, uh, thanks again. I am KM Sony, it is retired from CPO. Thanks a lot.